To Gary Neville, a pundit extraordinaire that has blessed our screens with some of Britain's funniest TV moments. And we all know Neville as one of the sharpest football pundits around. Always quick with an opinion and never shy to call out a mistake. But when he switched from the commentary box to the sidelines, from head scratching tactics to some truly unforgettable and not in a good way results, Gary's time as a manager was nothing short of a disaster. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to break down the highs and mostly lows of Gary Neville's managerial career. Quick disclaimer, Gary Neville if you see this, I'm sorry. Following Gary Neville's illustrious career at Manchester United, in which he won 12 Premier League titles, 4 FA Cups, 3 League Cups and 2 Champions Leagues. Just as many other footballers do, Gary Neville decided to take a chance in the world of coaching. Throughout his final season at the club, Gary Neville only saw the field 4 times but it was during this time in which he obtained some coaching badges to hopefully set him up for his career after football. It was thanks to this that the newly appointed England manager, Roy Hodgson, brought in Gary Neville to be his assistant manager. Gary Neville spent three years as assistant manager for England and his first test would come in the form of the 2012 Euros. 2012 was an interesting year for England as they were in a bit of a weird phase. See, the players from England's golden generation were getting on a bit. For example, the captain, Steven Gerrard, was 33, Frank Lampard was 34, and John Terry and Ashley Cole were both 32. In spite of age, England still had a plentiful squad, but neither their talent or experience was enough, as despite England finishing top of their group, they went out in the first round of the knockout stages, in heartbreaking fashion, at the hands of the Italians in a penalty shootout. Despite England's failure, this was crucial experience for Gary Neville at the start of his coaching career. England under Roy Hodgson and Gary Neville rose to third in the FIFA World Rankings, which is the highest position since the rankings were introduced in 1992. And so fast forward two years to the 2014 World Cup, England was still being managed by Roy Hodgson and Gary Neville. But this time around, Roy and Gary took a completely different approach as they packed the team with many youthful players. The most notable ones being 20-year-old Raheem Sterling, and 22-year-old Ross Barkley and 22-year-old Jack Grealish. Unfortunately, their strategy didn't seem to work as England lost their first two games 2-1 to both Italy and Uruguay. And so for the first time in 16 years, England were knocked out of the World Cup group stage. Despite this, Gary Neville and Roy Hodgson stayed in their positions as England managers. Following the 2014 World Cup disaster, Gary Neville was being inquired by clubs to become their manager. As Neville later disclosed in an interview that he had turned down managerial offers from clubs like Middlesbrough, Newcastle and Derby as his focus shifted more towards entrepreneurial ventures and media commitments. However, towards the end of 2015, all of that would change as Gary Neville would be appointed manager of Sevilla. On the 8th of December 2015, Gary Neville was appointed Sevilla manager through the recommendation of Peter Lim. Peter Lim is a Singaporean billionaire that owns a majority stake around 70% of Valencia and also owns around 40% of Salford City FC. Now you're probably wondering, why have I mentioned Salford City FC, a team that is currently struggling in the fourth tier of English football? Gary Neville, alongside a few other United teammates, also co-owns Salford City. See where I'm going with this? As a matter of fact, there are many businesses that Gary Neville and Peter Lim overlap. For example, they both co-own hotel football in Manchester. Now, I'm not the type to throw around allegations, but I think we all know how Gary Neville got the job, despite knowing no Spanish at all and not having any previous experience of being a head coach. Understandably, Valencia fans were pretty confused and angry as they couldn't see a future in Gary Neville. But regardless, Neville was now manager of Valencia. And before I break down each and every game, let me briefly explain the state of Valencia when Gary got there. Valencia had just come off an incredible season in 2014-15 with Nuno Espirito Santos as manager. They had managed to finish 4th in their league, qualifying for the Champions League with 77 points. Just one point ahead of Sevilla after a dramatic final week in which Valencia beat Grenada 4-0. But at the start of the 15-16 season, Valencia were unable to replicate their form as they only won 5 out of their first 15 games of the season, ultimately placing Valencia 9th. The poor start in La Liga was also reflected in the Champions League, as despite a relatively easy group, Valencia struggled. As a result, on the 29th of November 2015, following a 1-0 away defeat to Sevilla, Nuno resigned. 
and just 10 days later, Gary Neville was brought in on a six month contract just to finish the season out. But as we all know, that's not what happened. Luckily for Gary Neville, he inherited a pretty good team. He had a tactician and skipper Perejo in the midfield, alongside a young Andre Gomez. He had two solid fullbacks in Gaia and Jao Cancelo. And he had two decent strikers in Alvaro Negredo and Paco Alcacer. And now that you know how and why Gary Neville was brought in, let's start talking about the performances on the pitch. Gary Neville's first game was at home against Lyon, just one day after his appointment. Gary Neville decided to play a 4-3-3, with relatively the same starting eleven as Nuno's. Unfortunately, Valencia's defence couldn't handle Lyon's counter-attacks, as they lost 2-0 thanks to the teenager Maxwell Cornet scoring a banger before Alexandre Lacazette putting the game to bed in the 76th minute. As a result, Valencia would finish third in their group, and so they'd be knocked down to the Europa League. A nightmare start for Gary Neville. Gary Neville's first La Liga match was away at Ibar. Both Valencia and Ibar were tied on points coming into this game, so this game was a big one. Immediately, Valencia received the first blow, as Sergi Einrik had given Ibar the league. Things would go from bad to worse for Valencia, as in the 63rd minute, Lucas Urban would receive a harsh red card for what seemed to be a fair challenge. To rub salt in the wound of Valencia, a penalty was also awarded to Ibar. Luckily, the penalty was saved and Valencia had a lifeline. And with just five minutes left, Ibar defender David Junker got tangled with Andre Gomez, causing him to kick the ball in his own net. But it didn't end there, as in injury time, Valencia striker Paco Alcacer found himself through on goal before being brought down by Ibar's defender. Ramos was rightfully sent off, but had succeeded in preventing a winning goal and giving Gary Neville his dream start in Valencia. The next match would be a Copa del Rey game in which they won a comfortable 2-0 against third division side Baracaldo. Oh! The next game was his first home game. Valencia would host 14th place Getafe. The first half was eventful to say the least. Pablo Sarabia opened the scoring from a beautiful free kick and five minutes later Paco Alcacer equalised for Valencia thanks to a fantastic volley. Just eight minutes later a misplaced pass by Abdeneu saw Getafe capitalise and thus giving them back the lead. However, just 10 minutes after that, first half substitute, Santi Mina tapped in the equaliser for Valencia. Neither team managed to nick the win in the second half, and so the game ended 2 all. The following match was an away game, this time at 5th place Villarreal. This was Gary Neville's first big test, and how would he do? Terribly, as Villarreal's midfielder, Bruno Soriano, netted a beautiful free kick to earn his team a 1-0 victory over regional rivals Valencia. The Valencia were left in 10th, with coach Gary Neville winless in three La Liga matches. Not the best start, but things can always turn around. Unfortunately, the next game was no easier, as Gary Neville's Valencia played Real Madrid. The visitors scored first, when Karim Benzema finished off a great move involving Cristiano Ronaldo and Gareth Bale. But captain Danny Parejo equalised with a penalty just before the interval. The second half was eventful, as Real Madrid midfielder Mateo Kovacic was sent off for a bad tackle on Jao Cancelo seconds after Cristiano Ronaldo had a penalty appeal turned down. Eventually, Bale broke the deadlock by heading in what he thought would be the winner in the 82nd minute. But just 20 seconds later, his side was punished as Rodrigo nodded down a cross from Rodrigo de Paul for Alcacer to head it in from close range. The game ended 2 and was by far the biggest result in Gary Neville's time at Valencia so far. In fact, it was such a big win at the time that Neville insisted he wanted to remain at Valencia beyond his six-month contract. But it wouldn't take long for him to come back to reality, as the next game saw 16th place Sociedad pummel Valencia 2-0. Neville's record after five league games was woeful, losing two, drawing three and winning none. However, across all competitions, Gary Neville got his second and third win, once again in the Copa del Rey, this time in the round of 16 against Granada. His next league game was at home against relegation side Rayo Vallecano and in classic Gary Neville fashion, the opposing team scored first. Valencia did manage to equalise thanks to a brilliant 45 yard lob from Negredo. But in the 69th minute, Diego Llorente restored Rayo Vallecano's lead and Valencia once again found themselves behind. Luckily for Gary Neville and Valencia, Paco Alcacer rescued a point in the 88th minute. The game ended 2 all and Valencia had once again scored a late equaliser for the third time in Gary Neville's six La Liga games. Similar scenes were on display the following match 
as Valencia once again scored a last minute equaliser, this time against Deportivo. That makes it zero wins in seven for Gary Neville in the league. And he couldn't catch a break as things went from bad to worse for Gary Neville as the following two games saw Valencia defeated by two sides lower than them in the league. First was a 1-0 home defeat to Sporting Gijon and the second was a 1-0 defeat away at Real Betis. These defeats saw Valencia tumble down to 14th, just four points above relegation. Meanwhile, in the Copa del Rey, Valencia and Gary Neville had been doing pretty good as he managed to get through to the semi-finals thanks to beating Palmas in the quarter-finals but the semi-finals was when everything changed for Gary Neville at Valencia. See their opponents were the mighty Barcelona. But this wasn't just any Barcelona, this was prime MSN Barcelona. The same MSN that would go on to score 131 goals. That's more goals scored than the entire Arsenal squad did last season. And that's just by three men. So with hearing that, I think you know how this game went. Seven nil. Valencia were demolished seven nil. Miraculously, Gary Neville wasn't sacked, but in fact managed to bounce back from the seven nil domination by finally getting his first win in the league after nine games. The two one win was against Espanyol and came in the form of, you guessed it, a comeback in which the other team scores first. Somehow, some way, Gary Neville managed to keep up his winning ways by beating Granada two one. These two wins bumped Valencia back up to eleventh but the confidence gained was quick to fade away thanks to a 3-0 home defeat at the hands of Athletic Bilbao. This loss would make Gary Neville's La Liga record two wins, five draws and five losses. That equals to just 11 points out of a possible 33. The next match would be against Malaga in which a goalkeeping error gave Valencia their third win under Gary Neville. This win saw Valencia finally get out of the bottom half for the first time in nine games. But what would occur next can only be described as capitulation. Three back-to-back -back losses saw Valencia say, enough is enough. And Gary Neville had been sacked in under four months. He left Valencia in a worse way than he found it and somehow accomplished a 3-5-8 record in 16 league games, a win percentage of 19%. He also managed to achieve only 14 points out of a possible 48. That's 0.88 points per game. And if you remember earlier, I said, as a result, Valencia would finish third in their group and so they'd be knocked down to the Europa League. A nightmare start for Gary Neville. So you're probably wondering how they done. They lost in around the 16 to Athletic Bilbao on away goals. Like, comment and subscribe to join the counter attack.